Somebody once said that your future self is the result of the decisions that you make each day. Hey, we're still talking about creating lasting habits. This is part two. That's what's coming right up. Hey, well, welcome to Faith and Fitness Friday. My name is Joe Alvarado and I'm your host. And my goal and my passion is to help you know God better and to live a healthier life. Uh, for those of you who are new with me, um, I studied at Liberty University. I have my master's in biblical theology and I also have a ton of different certificates and, and experience with group fitness. I oversee the group fitness department at Lifetime in Centennial and I pastor a small church in North Denver. And so there you have it. Those are my credentials. And that's why I love to bring both faith and fitness together. You can consider this part two of this whole idea of creating lasting habits. And really we're learning how to create lasting habits because habits are what lead us to the goals that we have in our lives. And really uh, it's ironic because most people have kind of the same types of goals. We want to live healthier. We want healthier relationships. We want perhaps a little bit more money in the bank. For some of us, uh, we want to get a little bit closer to God. We want to be more spiritual. And so the idea is uh, how do we get there and how do we accomplish these goals? Now, last week I gave you a couple of tips that James Clear mentions in his book, Atomic Habits, which is what inspired this whole uh, series. And I said, hey, two minutes, do the two minute rule, whatever it is that you want to start, try it for two minutes, whether that's maybe maybe push-ups, maybe um, getting up early, maybe um, flossing your teeth, whatever it is for two minutes, just do it. Reading a book, I don't know, reading the Bible for two minutes, um, you can do it. Just start small. The other tip that I gave you, which is what I want to elaborate on today, is this idea of owning the moment owning this keystone habit that will in turn uh, lead to other healthy habits in your life. And you might be thinking, well, I don't, I'm not a habit person or I've never been good at developing habits. It's just not me. But here's the ironic thing that Harvard, Harvard Business Review reported that about 40 to 45% of what you do every day that feels like a decision is actually a habit. So some of the habits that I have, I, I wake up on the same side of the bed every day. Um, I use the bathroom like three times in the middle of the night. Wait, no, that's just because I'm in my 40s. Um, no, I, I uh, put my right shoe on first and then uh, then my left shoe. Um, I turn on the little electric uh, kettle water heater for, to get ready for my oatmeal. I'll go over to the pantry and put a half cup of oatmeal in. Um, and then when the water is hot, I'll pour it in, eat my oatmeal. I'll drive to the same uh, the same direction when I on my way to work. So all these little habits, they feel like decisions, um, but they're actually habits that make up 40 to 45% of what we do every day. So last week I talked about this idea of owning the moment that the one decision, the one new habit that create that you create can lead to other great habits. Um, Charles Duhigg, the author of The Power of Habit, he calls these keystone habits. So that's what I'm gonna call them, keystone habits. And they're correlated with other good habits. In other words, regular exercise, that one habit, that one decision to exercise regularly can lead to uh, better eating habits. In other words, if, I, if I'm exercising, I'm naturally gonna wanna eat a little bit better because I'm exercising, right? I don't wanna waste all the calories that I just burnt. So these keystone habits, uh, these these really important habits are kind of like dominoes, right? If you ever remember setting up dominoes as a kid and you set that first one up and then you set one that was just just spaced enough so that if you knock over the first one, it knocks over that one and on and on and on and on. The keystone habit you could say is kind of like that first properly placed domino, right? That if you knock that one over, if you get good at that one, the rest of everything behind it falls into place. If you wake up early, then you know you woke up early to exercise. If you exercise, you know you're gonna eat a little bit better. If you eat a little bit better, you know you're gonna feel a little bit better. If you feel a little bit better, maybe you're gonna drink more water and maybe more trips to the bathroom or <laughs> maybe your system is just gonna feel better and on and on and on and on it goes. So last Last week I talked and gave you the example about Daniel and, and that whole famous story of Daniel and the lion's den, you might remember, and how it was that he was strong enough to, to last in the lion's den and his faith was, was that big. But let me give you the a little bit more of details uh, about his life. In other words, a story behind before the 
big lion's den incident because it's powerful. It's it's the idea, the system, the one habit that made the big difference in the life of Daniel. Uh, because again, we think about lion's den and how impressive it was. But here's the story behind the story. In Daniel 6, 4, scripture says, Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. In other words, he was demonstrating this spiritual excellence, this dedication, this discipline, this leadership that he was going to get promoted uh, because of all these things. And, and again, because he was uh, great and, and, and going to be promoted, there was some jealousy going on and some of the administrators, they wanted to, to trap him. And, and so there was this decree that they came up with that anybody who prays to anybody other than the king over a period of time would be thrown into the lion's den. So here's where we're about to see that one habit, that routine come into play. The story before the success, the habit, the system. In Daniel 6.10, it says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before just as he always did, the habit that he had in place, the keystone habit, the system of prayer three times a day. This is what Daniel did. He prayed just as he had done before. This one small habit helped shape who he was, his identity, his confidence, his faith in God. You see that whole keystone thing, the the whole domino effect happening. Never underestimate how big one habit can be, how important one keystone habit can be. If you're a faith person, never underestimate how God can use one small habit to do something really big. Let me ask you this. So based on who you want to become, the goal that you have, what one habit do you need to start? What one keystone habit? It doesn't have to be big. Again, it's better if it's small. Don't hit snooze, right? Don't don't stay up all night on Instagram. Uh, get up 15 minutes earlier. In other words, if you want to be somebody who cares, maybe you write one note of appreciation a day, or, or maybe you want to be somebody who's organized. Maybe you, the first thing you do is start making your bed, or you want to be a, a, a godly example to your teen. Maybe you read a Bible plan together or you want to be a person that's focused. You start the day with with a little list of priorities or you want to be a person who is healthier and you just start by eliminating soft drinks. So a couple of tips on how to create these keystone habits. The first thing is really simple. Make it obvious, right? So if you want to be a person that takes vitamins. Don't leave them in the drawer. Don't leave them in the pantry. Leave them out on the island or the kitchen counter the night before, then it's obvious you get up, there they are, take them, right? If you want to be somebody who reads before bed, um, don't leave your book on the shelf. Uh, uh, put it on the pillow. That way you can do the whole two minute rule. The, the book is sitting there for two minutes. You read, you become somebody over time who reads, you know some more things, you get a little smarter, right? Um, make it obvious. That is the first thing you can do. Second thing you could do is, is another simple thing is make it easy, right? If you want to read the Bible, start by just reading one verse a day, right? The verse of the day on the Bible app. You know, if you want to, um, uh, be somebody who is more uh, touchy touchy with your with your spouse, your partner, right? S hold their hand, right? Thank God for one thing with them. Um, if you want to be somebody who starts to journal your thoughts or or whatever you feel like God is telling you, start with just one sentence, right? If you want to be somebody who who is, gets a little healthier, start with with five push-ups or just ten push-ups. Make it easy. Don't overdo it. Make it obvious. Make it easy. So many of us think that you lack motivation, but really what you lack is a system. You're not reaching your goals because you don't have a goal problem. You have a system problem. But as I mentioned last week, are goals completely useless? No, of course not. Goals are good for setting you in a direction, but a system is best for making progress. You develop a system, you make these goals easy, you make these new habits obvious and easy, and you're going to be on your right track to getting closer to God, to living healthier, all of the above. This is Faith and Fitness Friday. Next week, we're going to talk about how to eliminate some of the bad habits. This was how to create some of the good ones. Keystone, I hope this was helpful. I'm praying for you. 
I'm on your side. Reach out to me. Comment below if any of this helps. Share it with somebody. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless.